taking out some great clients, even losing money, you can fix it immediately with the Personal Branding Accelerator Program. I help game changers like you build a personal and business brand that automatically attracts clients who want to invest in you. Imagine waking up and feeling unstoppable because your ideas turn into dollars every time. Get booked onto podcasts, master LinkedIn, and attract clients immediately with the Personal Branding Accelerator Program and discover the future successes you deserve right now. In today's episode, we're going to be talking to a dear friend of mine who's also one of the world's smartest internet marketers. He does digital training like you would not believe right across the Middle East and Africa. He's somebody who's sought after as an author. And one of the things that he does so well, being a thought leader, is he never loses his roots. He always talks about pizza, Italy, Lamborghini, Ferrari, and of course, pasta. Who is he? Professor Christian Farioli is our next guest on Speak on Stage. Professor yeah, Christian Farioli, you know, we've been very good friends, almost best friends, I would say, uh, over 15 years, which is saying a lot. Is that because we've got no more friends left in Dubai or is it because we're so close? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, it's true that a lot of people come and go in Dubai, but uh, good people always, always stay. That's Absolutely. what we pretend to say. Well, well, we chat almost every other day anyway, and we share uh, ideas and websites and apps and all the stuff like that. And we're, we're in our little group, the Digital Avengers, which is fantastic. My wife, Aziza, who's like the grown up in the room. Um, uh, but I remember when we first connected, we were in Dubai, and Esther Verdugo had brought over a load of speakers, and they were trying to tap into an underserved market for speakers. Now, 15 years later, there's speakers everywhere. And... I think it's probably harder to position yourself as a good speaker than ever before. And that's where branding from me comes in. But of course, digital marketing from you comes in. Would you say that's true? That's absolutely true. Especially because even if we thought that Dubai is a small city, so everyone kind of know each other, everyone know everyone else. So if you're good, they know you and they refer you business. But at the same time, the same event organizers are coming and going. So every year there is a massive... Uh, refresh of, uh, of even senior, uh, senior people in, in the event industry. So basically every year we need to rework from scratch again to claim the top of the mountain. And, uh, so it's true that, uh, nowadays everyone called themselves speaker, etc., and they, they get some stage here and there. So um, there is a clear distinction between uh, the top notch event where they need uh, uh, some really thought leader like us because we are in the industry for so long. And then there are other events with the ju- they just need uh, to fill up the event with people. And, uh, and that's why they need uh, low cost, uh, low paid speakers to just to make sure that the room doesn't look empty. Now let's, <laughs> let's call it like that. It's completely true. Let's, let's take a little look at your background and your history before you move to Dubai. You are very much in the digital uh, space. So can you give us a bit of background on what you were doing before you became a full-time digital marketer and, of course, speaker? All right. Actually, I, by, by university, I'm an IT engineer. So I've been always uh, the guy that was uh, <clears throat> fixing stuff, uh, setting up computer, network, uh, software, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until the web economy. When the, the web uh, started appearing, I was one of the first four person to join uh, a partner of a Telecom Italia company, the largest telco operator in Italy. But again, I realized that technology was amazing, but back in the days, there were not much money to be made. The salaries were very low, and it was not like today, where if you are an IT engineer, you work for Facebook and you make a million dollars per year. Back in the day, my salary was around $400 a month. So that's quite far away. So I decided that I was gonna move into sales. And then I moved to Ireland and, uh, and I joined Oracle, the Fortune 500 company, the company who invented database. But I joined as a salesperson and I started building up markets uh, in, uh, in Italy, then moved to Spain, uh, etc. cetera. And, uh, and again, that was amazing. But I realized that a company like Oracle 
I mean, imagine the Fortune 500 company that's invented the database, they were not using internet at all to generate or help any sales. Sales, they were done the old way, phone call, customer visits, meetings, presentation, etc., etc. And that's when I realized, I mean, I'm passionate about technology and I'm, uh, and I'm an IT engineer. Why don't I, comp- don't I create something that can help uh, even a company like Oracle get in more sales? <clears throat> and then basically in 2003, I launched the first digital marketing campaign in Oracle and was at the time a Google pay-per-click, a Google ads campaign. So imagine 21 years ago where nobody could believe that you can pay Google to get advertising. I was the guy doing it in Oracle. Wow. And that put me on a pedestal because you can imagine nobody was doing it. I was the first. So I was the salesperson getting a lot of sales in my territory, etc. And then I was uh, working with Italy. Then I moved to Spain in Oracle and I was doing the same. And suddenly Spain became the number one country <laughs> on the region. And uh, so everyone realized that these things was working, but it was again, no idea, no knowledge uh, at all. And again, for me, it was just, uh, I was calling it getting customers online. That's it. Until uh, seven years later, when I was in Dubai that we met and I met a lot of other, uh, a lot of other speakers from United States, Canada, UK, Australia, that they were for the first time talking about these things called the digital marketing. And then basically this is when uh, I was, uh, I was captured and I say, okay, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life because uh, I love technology. I love sales and I need to combine the two. And that's exactly what digital marketing is about. And that's what I'm doing ever since until uh, I start as a freelancer, uh, like helping organization again, getting clients online. And then in 2010, I decided to open my own agency which uh, at the time there were not even any license that mentioned the word digital marketing or not even marketing. So I had to take any license that I can possibly get. And uh, and I started. Uh, So now it has been 14 years doing that. At the same time, again, for the first few years, I was struggling to explain those concepts to people, to organization. Nobody want to do it because nobody understood what what was this digital marketing things. So... That's why I decided to become a speaker and a trainer to make sure to teach everyone about this concept. Because back in the days, as our common friend said, nobody knows that nobody knows. And then I start uh, teaching people so they know that they don't know digital marketing. And that's where I open up my space and I start uh, entering into, into this market. And, uh, and that's what I've been doing for the, last, uh, <laughs> for the last several years. So basically, bottom line, still helping organization to grow using any kind of online tactic and digital tools. And bottom line, that's what today is still called digital marketing. Amazing. Now, I've seen you do your stuff, and I know that things like whenever Madonna came to town or any other big stars like that, they turn to you to drive all the ticket sales because your your knowledge of Google ads and pay-per-click and all the rest of it is second to none. But I want to ask you a question about your journey to get to that point because how did you feel when you came up with the concept? Because I've been through this several times myself, that you know the world needs, but the world doesn't actually want yet. So you've got to pioneer it. You've got to knock on doors. You've got to say, this is what you should be doing, but they just don't get it because if it was that good, why isn't everybody else doing it? But you've seen a gap in the market. How did you deal with that in your head without just going, you know what, you guys don't get it. I'll just leave it and carry on doing the same as we've always done. Actually, I mean, I was uh, 100% convinced that this was going to work. And and I was, and I've done it in Oracle. And uh, then I've done it even with my own company and my own companies. And I saw the power of it. I saw how much it worked. And so basically, I was always thinking, if you're not going to get it, it's just about time. When? is going to be mature in your mind, then you're going to come back to me. That's it. And that's why people, after a few months or even a few years, they come back to me and say, Christian, I remember when you were talking about this. Uh, now I think that we are ready. Okay, so <laughs> after a few years, uh, this has been maturing, has been growing in, in their mind. And when they're ready, no problem. I, I was happy to help. So this, uh, but obviously it was a struggle 
But I was always, always, always 1000% convinced that this was the way forward for any organization to get sales. Because again, being a, a, a salesperson myself and see how much time and effort you have to put into every single conversation with every client, starting the conversation, call, call, uh, uh, visit clients that they have no idea what you want to try to sell, etc. And convincing them to buy a massive Oracle service uh, from you, that's required a lot of skill and talent. And I always been looking forward for the future, knowing that there is not going to be so many salesperson uh, that can handle few clients. You're going to need a much, much, much larger scale system that allow you to, to close clients, to get clients on board, uh, or to open opportunity for clients. And that's why I, I mean, I say just about time. I've been always a visionary. I've been always uh, thinking uh, at least 10 years ahead uh, in a lot of different uh, topics. And so it was just about time. And uh, also, I realized that this was going to be my passion because once you try to do something and you don't succeed, you always change. Change mind, change idea. Your friends, your colleagues, they're going to tell you that this is not going to work. And that I realized it was completely wrong. So I knew that when I found uh, this concept, this idea about digital marketing, this was going to be my job for the rest of my life. If you do something strong enough, passionate enough, nobody can stop you. The problem of... Uh, a nowadays society is that everyone is changing. They start doing something and after six months, one year or two years, they don't see enough results and they change. And that's why they start something from scratch. That's what uh, makes everyone unsuccessful nowadays. So that was for me a revelation. I was lucky to discover and to realize that this was going to be my life and I stick with it and I'm still stick with it right now. That's amazing. So going back to that time when you made a decision about coming through to live in Dubai, you created something that was giving you great sales at Oracle, but somewhere along the line, talking to Professor Christian Farioli, you are not Oracle's top sales guru now. You're a completely different person doing a completely different job in a different country. Now, I had a similar experience when I worked years ago at the BBC. I was not a guru and none of that stuff. Um, but I found myself having to leave to start to go somewhere else, to reinvent myself, to get the success that I've managed to experience here. What is it, without naming names, that stopped you becoming... The, I mean, I can't imagine how you could not be... Uh, recognized as a big hitter in Oracle and put front and center with a, a department underneath you to learn how you were doing this stuff. What went wrong? What happened? Right. Actually, uh, it's uh, I even before joining Oracle, I already had set a plan for my future. So I knew that I was not going to work in Oracle all of my life in sales. Definitely not. But I know that uh, uh, sale was one of the ingredients that I need to master in my life. And I was lucky enough and I was committed enough uh, to get the job there. And then I devote uh, every single energy in my body to become a great salesperson. Because I know that this was going to be one of the skills that I need to know for a very long time. And it's going to always be helpful for me. Knowing that I'm not going to be a salesperson all of my life. And uh, so it was just a step. And then during that step, I discovered the next passion that was my true life motivation, which is digital marketing. And uh, so that's, that's the things. Now, I was uh, lucky enough, but I was also working a lot on myself to understand what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. As we say, when you're going to grow up, well, what are you going to do? Never. And um, which is an almost impossible question for most of people. Because you study something, but statistics shows that 80% of people, they ended up doing what they did not study for. And I'm, I'm also another of them because I studied IT engineering. I was supposed to set up network computer, become a programmer or something like this, or maybe an a programmer employee of Google or something like this. And in fact, I'm not. So uh, the difficult part is to discover what's going to be your life mission. And once you know it, boom, go for it, never stop. The revenue well, doesn't always come easy. And that was my first uh, at least five years of digital marketing career. I was even helping organization of my friends completely free. And I blow up so many companies, just make them from absolute zero to, to crazy revenue. 
And I was getting peanuts. I was getting paid a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the value that I was delivering. But that was the time. But actually, uh, one of the person that inspired me, it was in 2012 when I got the chance through uh, some organization in Abu Dhabi that were organizing the concert, the first concert of David Guetta. David Guetta has been awarded like 26 times best DJ in the world. So is the number one ever. And I had to research a little bit of his story to understand more about him because I was in charge of promoting the entire concert online. And then by researching him, I realized that his passion was to become a DJ and was to do the DJ for the rest of his life. And sometime he was going to clubs when he was in the very early stage and there was already some resident DJ. And they say, so sorry, we already have our own resident DJ, so we cannot pay you. And he say, yeah, don't worry. If you have some space, even an hour, I can play. Don't pay me. No problem. I'm, I'm already here. So you don't need to pay me. Because his passion was to be the DJ. That's it. Even without getting paid, he was getting uh, emotional and he was getting his uh, recognition from being a DJ, not from getting money. And that's what, uh, what also inspired me to keep doing exactly the same for the first few years of my life. Now, of course, I have a family, I have a wife and kids, so <laughs> working for free, unfortunately, is not an option. I could do it, but unfortunately, I have to feed my family. But uh, the same idea stays. So for me, if you are so passionate about something, keep doing it. I agree with you completely. And there's a phrase, um, a prophet is never a prophet in their own land. So often when you come up with amazing things, your own people never believe you're that good, because otherwise you'd have to believe that they are that bad. Or where's their inspiration going to come through? So you have to go somewhere else to start again. And I found out for both of us in many ways, Dubai gave us the opportunity to stand up and say, this is me, this is what I do. And people go, okay, go on then. And so we did. And the success kind of came from that. So when you're out there and you, you, you're helping people to find their positioning um, and to, to launch their businesses to higher levels, there's a challenge that you obviously love tech and you love staying on top of the digital marketing um, elements that come along. But the AI that we're dealing with right now has just wiped everybody out. Now, how do you reinvent yourself when AI can clearly do what you do, but it can't do it the way that Christian does it? So how do you That's position great... yourself to be different yeah. than anybody who just says, do some internet marketing for me, tell me what to do and I'll follow the steps? That's a great question, Dave. And actually for me, it's nothing new because uh, uh, first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm involved with AI since uh, when I was in the university. So for many people, for most of people, AI is something from the future. But the first theoretical concept of AI was developed in 1955. Mm. So AI is something from the very past. It's not from the future. Now or, uh, everyone has started using it because OpenAI created ChatGPT, which is a stupid, simple to use, and everyone starts digging into it. Now, this reminds me exactly what's happened with Google. Now, I was still in, uh, in the university. No, actually, I would just finish the university when Google was around. And, uh, and again, majority of people, they don't know about it. And I was always thinking, how is that possible that uh, people pay somebody to do something where you can just Google it and you get the answer? You don't need to pay that. But this has been around for, for a few decades already, and it's still like that. So depending how much you know technology, there is always some part of the population which they don't know enough, like you, and you enjoy the gap. Because from that gap, you provide the service that others are not aware. Once they're going to be aware, you're going to need to upscale, you're going to need to be up in the food chain, so you can do something else. And that's what everyone, every visionary, every innovators like myself has been telling everyone. If you are a doctor, if you are a GP doctor, you are the lowest paid in the doctor scale. And it's already been proven that there are so many artificial intelligence systems that they can do the job better than most of the GP, which is a fact. I'm not inventing anything. I'm not claiming something on myself. There are infinite amount of uh, tests that has been done. So why I should go to a GP? Sometime we still go to GP, but it's going to be the time very soon where you're going to have your own AI GP that's going to tell you and speak with you and fix some stuff for you, etc. Now, clearly, if you are a smart GP, you become a specialist. You start growing. 
your personal brand. And in that case, of course, the AI GP is not going to fix your broken arm. You're still going to be <laughs> need a real doctor, right? Not any AI. And that's happening in every, in every field, in every organization. For me, AI is the new version of Microsoft Office. I'm sure that all of you has in your uh, CV that you are proficient in Microsoft Office. Amazing, right? Now, who doesn't? Now, you tell me, guys, any employer that hires somebody and he check, oh, this guy know how to use Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. So we're going to hire him. Now, obviously, everyone knows Office, right? Imagine how was your life before Microsoft Office. If now they'll take it away from you, what are you going to do? You're going to remain like, uh, I don't know what to do, right? And I'm absolutely sure that a few years from now, we will talk about do you remember how our life was before <laughs> artificial intelligence? Yes, yes, I remember. I have to write so many mails, so much stuff. Uh, now there is this and this and that. There is a GPT, there is Copilot. There are so many systems doing that job for you. And basically, it's a, it's a natural evolution. We're not going to reinvent uh, anything. It's something every major technology disruption has going through for some time. And when we talk about technology disruption, when we talk about the industrial revolution, the agricultural revolution, this has been around for, for more than a century. It's not something new. We just need to change the perspective to see how this comes. Should we be scared of it? Lots of people are worried about it taking our jobs. For me, I've always had an opinion that you should be raising your game anyway. So anything that comes into the market, you deal with. Like a pandemic, for instance, you change what you do, you roll with the punches, and you come out with a, with a new product. Would you say that's true of AI for most people? 100%. As a, again, it's not because only I say so, but there are countless uh, statistics and research that they say that AI is already capable of doing more than 50% of today's jobs. And uh, in a matter of very, very, very few years, it's going to be capable of doing more than 80% of today's jobs. Now, people, they're going to even lose their job, but they're going to adapt because that's the, beauty, that, that's the beauty of human being, because we are resilient. If they take away your job, your money, your home, your everything, you're not going to sit on the laying on the ground and waiting the moment to die. You're going to adapt. You're going to find out. You're going to cultivate your own crop. You're going you're gonna to do something. You're going to adjust. You're going to adapt. You're going to change completely. Now you are a, a, a professional doing something. You're going to do something completely opposite simply because you are adapt. You are a resilient human being and that's going to happen. Now, somebody is going to adapt faster. Somebody else is going to take a little bit longer. Somebody else is going to do it before everyone else. And that's what I've been doing all of my life because I'm a passionate uh, technologist and, and futurist and innovator. So I've been always doing things way before everyone else with including some trial and error. Because once you are the first doing something, of course, you will break some plates. But uh, again, keep going, keep going. You fix things and then you are the first. So uh, 100% true that AI is going to take a lot of... Uh, I won't say jobs, I will say activity. Because now in your job, you're doing a certain amount of activity. Some of them are going to be done by AI, but you're going to be, be keep doing other activities. And for other activities, your production level is going to multi be multiplied by 10 times or 100 times. Again, think before Microsoft Excel. How was your life as an accountant? You need a paper book. You need to write a lot of things and number and calculation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now this job is done in one minute by Excel. And you are the same accountant using a different tool to do 100 times more work just with a different tool. Now, AI is going to allow you to do 10,000 times more work just using a different tool. But you're still going to need to work eight hours a day. So the dream of somebody is, oh, AI is going to work and we're going to stay home, just uh, enjoying life on the beach uh, and AI is going to make money for me. Actually, no organization is going to allow that. Organization are going to tell you, now you're going to need to sit in the office, use AI tools and produce 10,000 times what you used to produce with before Microsoft Excel and Office and computers. So uh, for me, the change is inevitable, but what kind of change is going to happen that's the a little bit different than uh, 
than what some people are afraid of. If we dial it back to what you mentioned there about how you've got to upgrade your skills, I run an accelerator of industry outcome program where I help people to become thought leaders. And so the biggest challenge for a thought leader is, first of all, what it is you can position yourself as, how you can make the market understand who you are and what you do, and also how to monetize it. Those are the challenges that we come across amongst many other things. So many thought leaders um, actually aren't leaders of big communities. They just do it on their own, but people find them after that. But AI allows you to really dig deep into what you're good at, and it does all the researching, all the hard work of pulling stuff together. It's almost like having a Mr. Spock as part of your team. And if you're a one-man band, you've got a best mate from out of nowhere who's really smart at getting stuff done. Do you think that we're going to see a lot more people coming up with stuff as thought leaders and bringing out different niches and different areas now that you can? Or do you think people are going to pretty much stay in their lane and it's always going to be somebody who doesn't, who stands out and wants to do something different that's going to make the big impact? That's another great question. Now, as an avid learner, I've been always passionate about learning new things. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, when there is nothing available, you need to research and you need to take some information here and there to get your own idea. And that's what innovators like me, they do. Uh, like scavenging any kind of YouTube video, TikTok, etc., just to get information. Then compiling information together and putting available for a premium audience. And those are, for example, my students that uh, I've done some calculation in the last uh, 12 years where I've been teaching digital marketing to a lot of uh, organizations, not only in the Middle East, but even uh, worldwide, I've been teaching more than 16,000 students. Wow. Which, I mean, I call it students, but they are executives, they are marketing professionals, they are chief marketing officer, even CEO. And so basically, they don't have uh, 20 years of time like I had myself to research uh, and trial and error everything. So they, uh, I condense uh, all of my 20 years of experience in sessions of uh, two, three, five days. And then basically they get all of the concentrated juice from me because the resource that uh, we don't have enough is time. So if you want to get results in short, in a short amount of time, you need to get it from somebody that has already been through. And that's why uh, as well, even for my own personal brand, I was researching a lot until I met you, Dave. And then you heavily helped me scaling up and, uh, and become the, the public speaker that I am today. And not only with personal brand, but as well with, uh, as a public speaker. Because if I need to research how to become a public speaker online, I can spend all of my life doing it, which is not my job. My job is to help company grow with online tools. Every other things, which is not that, I outsource or I pay the best to teach me. And that's how I cut the chase and I can focus all of my time on my mission. That's fascinating. I'm going to ask you one last question. It's been a pleasure as always chatting with you about this stuff. And we talk like this all the time. Capturing it for, a, for an interview is rare, but you and I will do two hours, three hours talking about this stuff on a, on a regular <laughs> basis without even having a, a, a subject. The question I want to ask you is something I don't normally ask you, which is where... This Christian Farioli, Professor Christian Farioli, what's your end game? Where do you want to be? What's this heading towards? Do you have a plan or are you just constantly reacting and enjoying the ride? That's a great question. I was hoping to keep my personal plan secret, but since uh, you are a dear friend and I like your, your community of uh, aspiring uh, public speaker and personal brands, I can share that my goal is always the same. Help any organization to grow significantly using any possible tool and tactic that are not that they are not aware of. Now, in some case, I find some interesting business and I join as an equity partner because it's not only about uh, my digital marketing agency. Sometimes also I find some interesting ventures and helping those venture growing up significantly. That's also fulfilling for me. And that's from the from the trainer part. Basically, I my next step is going to be to launch an effective digital marketing training online, allowing everyone to understand and learn from me the best possible topics and tactics. And I also, I mean, I, I wrote books on AI and on digital marketing to help every human being. 
if you don't have the time to attend the training, etc., get one of my book. Then at least you will learn bit by bit. It's going to take a little bit longer, but you're going to learn. Uh, if you don't have enough time, come to one of my training. If you don't have enough money, you will go to one of my training online that I basically about to launch. So to make sure that everyone should know enough about digital marketing, even if your job is not marketing, if you're an entrepreneur, you are a startup owner, you need to understand the game. Then you understand the game and you know what you can hire, which company you can outsource to, which tactic are better for you. But at least you need to have enough knowledge because otherwise you're not going to succeed. And you've got an agency that you're putting together as well to speed up this whole process of helping more people and, uh, and, and reaching more people as well, haven't you? True. Uh, actually, I don't like about selling my own agency, but the interesting thing is that we help uh, a lot of clients to grow online, but we get uh, all of our clients from word of mouth. So that's a funny story because we don't need 1,000 clients every day. We need some good clients and keep them happy for a very long time. That's uh, my personal business model because every client become a friend. And so I prefer to keep my circle of friends and clients close and then help them growing a lot more than simply saying, yeah, just one more client, one more client, one more client. And uh, so that's basically, that's what I've been doing for the last 14 years since I opened my agency. And that's what I'm sure that I'm gonna keep doing for quite some time. Fantastic. And as always, I'll be I'll be hanging around you for that journey, speaking every now and again, but having lots of laughs with vodka limons as often as we possibly can. <laughs> Christian Farioli, it's been an amazing session. Uh, and thanks very much for your insights and your knowledge and sharing the time with us all about where you're going, the future of uh, the technology and also how that really reson resonates with thought leaders. So. If you've enjoyed this session, make sure you connect with uh, Professor Christian Farioli. Not only is he a dear friend, he's a thought leader, he's a genius when it comes to things in tech. And every single time you catch a post of his, there's something new that you didn't know. Trust me. And that's why I need to keep on top of all these different things. We've got some more great guests coming up. We'll be sharing their knowledge on being a thought leader and giving you tons of insights about raising your game. Meanwhile, thank you so much for joining us for this. It's a pleasure having you here. It's time to learn to jump and grow wings. This is Speak On Stage.